Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Addiction Unlimited podcast, where you get to learn everything you want to know about addiction and recovery. I'm your host, Angela Pugh, co-founder of Kansas City Recovery, life coach, and recovering alcoholic. To learn more about me, you can listen to episode zero on your podcast app or find us on the web at addictionunlimited.com. Hey there, welcome to episode number 148 of the Addiction Unlimited podcast. Thank you for hanging out with me today, listening to the pod. Love you guys as always. And I know you guys are already crushing it in 2021, crushing it sober. I know you're crushing your goals, you're following through. We did an awesome webinar about setting new year intentions. And really, I hope you guys have taken some time to really think about that stuff and write it down. You know, you are much more apt to follow through on something and really do it. You know, it's all about action and doing it, not just thinking it or saying it, but do it. (laughs) And you are much more apt to do that if you write things down because it really solidifies that that's your intention, right? You're not screwing around. It's not just a thought. You're not half-assing it. Like this is really an intention and I'm writing it down because I'm serious about it. And that's about commitment, right? And we're already in February. And I realized For myself, like I had been so focused on doing all of this stuff. January was so busy and I was so focused on doing all of this stuff and making sure like driving this point home for you guys, like write down your intentions um, that I hadn't done my own yet. (laughs) So I've really been thinking about this a lot, you know, over the last several months, really, I start thinking about my intentions probably real seriously, like September, October, right? I start thinking about the next year and, you know, what maybe I didn't get done or do enough of in the prior year and where my focus and energy, where I want it to be, all that stuff. So I have a pretty good idea, but I have to still sit down and write it down. And I've been, I had a, I have a piece of scratch paper that I've just been kind of purging my thoughts, right? As something comes to me, I write it on the paper. So I've got a messy page that I just need to sit down and kind of make sense of it and and make sure I'm doing what I want to be doing, make sure I'm putting my energy in the right place. And I can't believe it's already February, you guys, seriously, freaking February already, And I kind of love that because I like that time goes really fast. I feel like I'm more focused when I don't, when I feel like I don't have enough time. I never have enough time to do everything. But we're all kind of working through change. And that's what I really want to talk about today. I really want to dig into four stages to work through change because one of the things we can always count on in the world is change. And change freaks a lot of people out. And I get that. In certain ways, it can throw me off my game too. But change to me is also super exciting because it's stimulating, right? And I I like the excitement of it. I like to be stimulated. I like having to figure out a new way and having to brainstorm solutions and troubleshoot. I like all that stuff. So change to me, most of the time, is pretty fun. Now, there are other kinds of changes that when you start to make them, especially with habits and stuff like that, it can be more challenging, right? Because we're so solid in our old ways. It's really challenging to push through all the internal turmoil we have with change. And that's so human nature to like, don't feel bad about that. It's just how we're wired as human beings. That's just how it goes. But all these feelings get triggered, right? And especially as people with addiction, we do not cope with feelings very well. (laughs) So (laughs) one of the things I want to do is I'm going to do a webinar. This is so impromptu, you guys, and you have to jump on it because you literally only have like a week. And I just decided the last minute that I wanted to do this, but this is a recovery audit webinar. 
And this is what we're going to do. We're, we're going to audit your recovery. We're going to look at really what you're doing and see where the holes are. Like, what are you missing that's causing you to stay stuck in this yo-yo sobriety? The Recovery Audit Webinar is going to be Wednesday, February 10th at 6 p.m. There is a page to sign up at www.myrecoverytoolbox.com. I'll put a banner across the top of the page to sign up for the Recovery Audit Webinar. And we're really going to look at the different areas of recovery where you can see what you are missing, what you're not doing, what you're not following through on. And this is super concrete, you guys. This is a a checklist, right, to walk you through what you need to be doing and see what ingredients you're missing. So recovery audit webinar, www.myrecoverytoolbox.com. At the top of the page, there'll be a banner to sign up for the recovery audit webinar, February 10th, 6 p.m. Central Time. Go sign up. You've got a week. That's all. We're going to throw this thing together. I think it's super important. I think it's going to be great fun. And I have to do it that fast because my next six-week signature coaching program starts right after that. (laughs) So I'm kind of squeezing everything in. But I thought this was really important, especially at the beginning of the year. I really want you guys to make 2021 your year, and I want you to do everything you want to do in your recovery. I want you to feel awesome about it. So that's what we're doing, Recovery Audit Webinar, okay? Jump on it. Don't F around. Don't wait. You've got one week. Sign up. Get your happy little buns in there, and I'll see you there. And this leads into, again, triggering all those feelings. When you have these gaps in your recovery and you have relapses and you're trying to figure out what's happening, what the heck am I doing, what is wrong with me, why can't I figure this out, this dang recovery thing is driving me crazy, it triggers all of these feelings. And feelings are not scary. Feelings are feedback. You've heard me talk about this a million times. Feelings are feedback. Feelings are just letting you know where you need some work. Start doing that work and understand the feelings, and then you won't need to turn to alcohol as your solution, right? Because you'll be able to solve your own challenges. You don't need booze to drown your feelings when you know how to deal with them and you don't freak out about them. There's also a major misunderstanding when it comes to making big life changes, especially like giving up alcohol. You know what to do, but what you actually do looks a little different. (laughs) This is going back to, it's not about thinking about it or talking about it. It's about what you actually do. Take action. And there's nothing wrong with you, right? This is the same challenge for everyone in everything, That's why it's so important that you have to have support when you embark on a journey like this. And, you know, support is the number one thing that people are looking for when they're trying to make changes, right? Especially, again, getting sober. Support is the number one thing everybody wants. And there's a ton of evidence that having a strong support group can be the key to playing the long game successfully in sobriety or any other change you're making. The problem isn't that you don't know the tools to prevent relapse, right? But that you haven't created the support and accountability you need to stay on track. So we're going to talk about working through change. These are four stages to work through change, okay? Recognize, evaluate, accept, take action. I have a success path uh, for Sober Society members that I put together that's kind of posted on the website and stuff. And this is exactly what it's all about, right? There is a process to really making changes and understanding what you're doing and also being connected to the changes that you want to make. We have a tendency to procrastinate and put things off and not really commit and not take it seriously when we are not connected 
to it. And again, that's the importance of doing these things and writing things down. This is about your level of commitment. If you don't even have enough commitment to sit down and write out a plan, write out your recipe for recovery, if you don't even have the commitment to sit down and do that, how the heck do you think your commitment is going to be when you walk into a family gathering and everybody's drinking? Do you think you're going to be super committed in that moment if you're not even committed enough to spend 10 minutes writing some things on a piece of paper? You see what I'm saying? This is how you start to really audit what you're doing and what you're putting your energy into and how serious you are about it. So let's talk about recognize first. Recognize, like recognize your thoughts and habits. What are your thoughts about getting sober? What's important to you? How do you feel about it? Are your thoughts influencing your attitude about it? Because you know that's absolutely true. When I say, stop telling yourself your old story, right? Your old story might just be a week old. It might be two days old, but today can be the beginning of your new story. And your new story might be totally different. What you didn't like yesterday, what you didn't like a year ago, you might be totally fine with today because you're more open-minded and you're more emotionally mature and willing to do things differently than you were before. That can be your new story. So, How are your thoughts influencing your attitude? Are you stuck telling yourself that old story so you continue to fall into that old crappy attitude about, oh, this is going to be so hard. This is going to be awful. I'm going to lose all my friends, right? All that stuff is crap. You can't get stuck in that old story. Get stuck in your new story and what that looks like. And are your thoughts and attitude creating the life you want. Really get connected to this. Really get connected to this. Is how you're doing it now creating the life you want? And how can you do better? How can you change your thoughts to more positive, effective thoughts? How can you change your habits? These are all the things we work on in recovery. Let's move on to evaluate. Evaluate what's important. Evaluate your feelings, your lifestyle, your relationships. And think about what's important. What needs to change? Do you have enough energy to make changes? This is huge. We don't want to take time for ourselves. We don't want to, again, make a commitment to taking time for ourselves to do things on a personal level to refill our tank. We don't want to make that commitment. We say, oh, I'm too busy and the kids and housework and making dinner and the job and the spouse and the whatever. I'm so busy. Well, again, this is about your commitment. Where's your commitment? Are you going to refill your tank so that you have the energy to tackle life? Or are you just going to blow it off and let it go? Evaluate where you are, what's important. Do you have enough energy to really do what you need to do? And what needs to change? Do you enjoy your lifestyle? Are you experiencing the feelings you want to experience in life? Or are your feelings kind of crappy and overwhelming? See, feelings are feedback. (laughs) So if it's crappy and overwhelming, we might want to do some work there. Okay, let's move into accept acceptance. I love acceptance. This is huge, you guys. This is acceptance of your circumstances, acceptance of who you are, acceptance of where you are in your life, acceptance of where the people around you are in your life, and be okay with that. 
Stop trying to fight everybody. Stop being angry that people don't understand or that they don't support you the way you think they should. Accept people for who they are. Accept yourself for who you are. That was a whole tangent. That's not even in my notes, by the way. (laughs) So let me get back on, on the priorities here. Accept yourself and your past. Accept what you can't change, right? And that's what my little tangent was just about is all the things you can't change. Have some acceptance there. Look at what you can change. All you can change is you, your thoughts, your attitude, your reactions. That's all you really have any power over. And what things do you need to let go? There's a level of acceptance in this too. I can be really upset about certain circumstances or things that happened when I was a kid. You know, there are things in my upbringing that that really kind of make me sad. You know, I was exposed to things I wish I wouldn't have been. And at some point, you know, most of my life, I had a lot of anger as a young person. I had a lot of anger about that stuff. And I was mean because I was angry. And at some point, I had to get to a place of acceptance. In that, again, I can't change any of that stuff, right? There's nothing I can do. But the bigger piece of that acceptance for me was understanding that all of that anger was doing nothing but killing me from the inside out. It made me an angry, little, mouthy, condescending, mean person with a horrible temper. That's who I was. Not super pleasant. I could be super pleasant too, but boy, I had a temper and I had to work really hard on that because I had so much anger inside of me because I wasn't in a place of acceptance. I couldn't let things go. And once I got to a place, that place of acceptance And I thought, oh my gosh, all this is doing is killing me, right? Like nobody else is hurting. The circumstances aren't changing. The past obviously isn't going to change because I don't have a time machine. So I need to let it go and I need to learn how to heal. And that's what I did. And I had that epiphany really about my mid-20s, I would say probably 25, 26, somewhere around there that I just realized all the anger I was carrying was just dumb. There was nothing I could do about it. So I had to focus on feeling better, forgiving other people. That's really where my anger came from is I needed to do a lot of forgiving and letting go. And then also, I like to think too in that acceptance, how would the best version of me handle this? How would the best version of me step into this healing process and go through it? Because that's who I want to be, right? That's what I want to grow into, the best version of me. So the sooner I can start acting on behalf of the best version of me, the better I'm going to be. All right, how about take action? You know this is my favorite because this is the fun part. The taking action part, this is where you get all the rewards. This is where you get all the stimulation and growth and learning and strength and power. All of that comes from the action, right? Problems, who cares about problems? Every There's always a ton of problems. Problems aren't even interesting. The solutions are really interesting. So let's get in the solution. Let's take action. What does that look like? Number one, take responsibility. You know, this is my whole premise for everything in life. You are your responsibility. It is no one else's responsibility to accommodate me. I am my responsibility. It's my responsibility to set healthy boundaries when I need to and to recognize when I need to, right? I can't walk into a situation and be angry at everybody there because they're not doing what I want them to do. If the situation is going to be uncomfortable for me, it's my responsibility to set boundaries for myself and protect myself. That's my responsibility, nobody else's. So take responsibility, okay? Make bold moves. If you want big changes, 
you got to take big action. What three actions could you start working on that would make significant changes in your life that will move you toward that best version of you living that best life you want to live? And how do you do that? Again, this is where writing stuff down comes in so handy. Are you committed enough to write it down? Are you committed enough to take those few minutes and do that? Are you committed enough to revisit that page once a week or a couple of times a month? I mean, it's that simple, you guys, really that simple. So how committed are you? Also in Take Action, I want to talk about facing your fears, facing your difficulties. And what I mean by that is, obviously, we all have fears, right? It's okay to have fear. It's okay to be afraid of something. It's okay to be uncomfortable and uncertain. That's normal. What I don't want is for that fear to hold you back. I want you to recognize the fear and go, okay, let's do this. (laughs) You know, how am I going to do it? How am I going to do it carefully? How am I going to do it to the best of my ability? How am I going to do it in a way that I can still feel safe and okay in whatever it is? It's okay to have fear. I don't want that fear to stop you. We move forward through fear. And that's that's what we call courage. When you move forward through fear, that's courage. That's who I want you to be. That's who I want me to be, right? So face those fears and think about them and face your difficulties. And difficulties can be a lot of different things, right? Of course, it can be fear. It can be some pushback from family or financial stuff. It can be time restraints. Difficulties are just any hurdle you're going to have to jump over to do the things you want to do. And the more you can think about those things in advance and plan around them, the better, right? Difficulties shouldn't hold you back either. You just got to figure out how to manipulate the system and work around the difficulties. If you've got kids that get up early in the morning, then obviously don't make that early morning your time to have to yourself, right? Like that's not going to work. You need to pick a different time, pick when everybody's gone or create a time that you can leave the house for 30 minutes and have some time to yourself. Whatever those difficulties are going to be for you, you figure that stuff out in advance and you make a plan to work around it. Okay. That's taking action and that's taking responsibility. We're all going to have hurdles. You're also never going to do this perfectly. There is no perfect. You know, some days I knock it out of the park. Some days I want to hide under my bed. (laughs) You know, that also is just being human. So don't put pressure on yourself and have these expectations that you're going to do every single thing every single day and you're going to be awesome all the time and you're going to feel great and it's all going to be easy and rainbows and unicorns. None of that is accurate. I want your expectation to be that some days are going to be really hard. Expect that you're going to have to challenge yourself. Expect that you are going to be uncomfortable sometimes. And know that you'll be okay to get through those things. You're fine with that. None of us have ever died from being uncomfortable. You are so much more powerful than you understand. You can get through discomfort. You can get through uncertainty. You can get through frustration, irritability, and anger, and just a general pissed offness. You can get through all of it. But expect that sometimes it'll be hard. And sometimes you're not going to do it great. None of us do. Give yourself a little bit of grace. Give yourself a little bit of acceptance and forgiveness. I hope you guys love this episode. If you got some great value from this, please take a minute and share it with somebody. Be of service. We want to help and support one another and share resources always. And don't forget, you've got one week, okay? You've got one week to sign up for the webinar. 
Recovery Audit Webinar. That's where you want to be next Wednesday, the 10th. I shouldn't say it like that because I don't know when you're listening to this. Wednesday, February 10th at 6 p.m. Central. Go to www.myrecoverytoolbox.com. I'll put a banner at the very top of the page for you to click to sign up for the webinar. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I will see you next week. You've reached the end of another great episode of the Addiction Unlimited podcast, candid and honest conversation about addiction and recovery. Be sure to visit us at addictionunlimited.com to join the conversation and access show notes and links to everything we talked about. Love this episode? Please take 30 seconds to subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes to help us improve and give you the information you want. Thanks for listening. See you next week.